What is up guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about water damage restoration, truck and van setups. What type of vehicles do we have? Which ones do we like? Which ones do we not like? How do we have them racked out on the inside? What equipment, what gear did we have on the inside? Guys, if you own a restoration company, I'm just gonna tell you this, you're gonna to wanna to see this video. Let's go. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to walk you through a handful of the different vehicles that we had. And in a minute, I'll share my screen. I'll show you some of the images of the interiors, the backs, right? And like the different equipment that we had in it. And even some of the part lists that we had in terms of the racks. But first, let's start with what are the types of vehicles that we had over the years, okay? So we had traditional box trucks. You may have seen like the gorilla trucks that are out there too, but we had big box trucks. There's the kind that you can get like with the gorilla beds on the back. Um, we had traditional cargo vans in the early days because we couldn't afford anything. And we literally had like wooden shelves on the inside. We had Ford Ranger that we would do monitoring stuff with and put a project manager in. And then eventually we grew up to where we could afford to buy some Ford Transits, okay? So we got into the white traditional stuff. We got a transit. Transit Connect, and then we also got regular transits too. We had all kinds of different things. So let's maybe look at a couple different pros and cons. The big box trucks, we wound up getting rid of those first because they were really big and I just didn't I, d I just didn't need them. We eventually transitioned into transits and we got slimmer, more compact equipment and we were able to squeeze more gear into a smaller vehicle. And for that reason, when we sold stuff off first, we got rid of the box trucks. So we got rid of box trucks and we got rid of cargo vans. The Ford Rangers, we had those primarily because we did reconstruction as well. So we would allow our project managers to drive those back and forth to jobs. There was a bed of a truck so he could haul some trash off as well. The Ford Rangers really weren't that bad, okay? Pickup trucks have a place in a business. They really, really do. There's gonna be cases where you might wanna haul off some trash. And we had a Ford Transit Connect that we would use for that too. But the problem with that, sometimes you'll have some paint fumes and some nasty stuff that you don't wanna be smelling while your dudes are driving that. In the bed of the truck's just better, okay? There's pros and cons all the way around. But at some point, a pickup truck with a bed is warranted. One of the mistakes we made, we bought a Ford Transit Connect and like maybe you could use it for monitoring but like what i found in the end is we got rid of the transit connect and just bought another transit and we would do the monitoring in another transit why because sometimes we would get a call and you can't really respond to your jobs in a connect the same way you can the big transit so for that reason um i just i'm out on the transit connects i've seen some guys and they like doing the monitoring trips with them i get it that's cool i'm just saying at some point you're going to get a call and you can't do the same things in a transit connect that you can on a big one i would just monitor in a fully rigged out truck okay a van all right so that's what i would say so my favorite van anyway was the ford transit so this is the ford transit we would get the mid roof all right now you have three different types you can get like the low roof you can get the mid roof or you can get the high roof we liked the mid roof okay and always get a backup camera make sure you get a backup camera these guys freaking they ding them up okay we like the mid roof and here's the primary reason why your guys are at some point going to go through a drive through to get a hamburger and you cannot fit in a drive through with the high roof okay you can fit in it in a mid roof but you cannot get a high roof in there and they're going to peel the top off of your dang van trying to get a hot dog and you don't want that so for that reason these are the images of the transits that we would use in the background there you can see a nissan i just don't like the nissans i've been burned by dodge okay i've had one dodge truck after i put three transmissions in it baby i was done with those guys so peace out dodge i love you but i still don't trust you baby i don't trust you so i'm a transit guy we own several transits and i still like those those are good trucks dude they're good trucks I would, I would go back to a transit, get in a heartbeat. Inside of that transit, we liked using low profile equipment. And you can look, and again, I'll show you the racks that we had here, but I just want you to see how we had these things racked out. We eventually moved to compact DUs, okay? And we would keep four DUs. Disclaimer, these little red guys right here, I would never buy any of those things again. We bought like $30,000 of Phoenix gear at once, okay? And dude, those things are garbage, garbage. Those pumps, they're, they're still going out, dude. Is horrible. I got onto them. I reached out to them. I was like, listen, dude, I'm so disappointed with this. They mailed me some other pumps and some refurbished pumps, but like their idea of making it right still cost me labor to put it in. The reality is this, they manufactured and sold junk and it's just junk. I would not buy a Phoenix compact DHU for anything. Now they're big 175s, the big ones, the 150s, those are good, but they ain't gonna fit in there, okay? These little ones are garbage, do not buy the little ones. I would 100% go get the dry ease over those guys, okay? But I'm not here to tell you what brands are the best to use, but I will tell you don't get the red ones that are Phoenix, okay? Now, you can see we have Phoenix air movers here. I did like their fans. I did like their fans. I don't really care about the brand. I'm not gonna not buy Phoenix. I would just never not buy, I just would not buy that DHU again. 
Does that make sense? I did like their fans. They're, they're lightweight. They stack nicely. And so that's how we would put that together. Okay. So that's an example. So let's maybe flip through a couple of these images. So here we can put four DHUs down here and then we would have these fans stacked up here and up top, we would wind up having some of our hoses for our injected rods, et cetera. Okay. And there's another angle as well. I think from these fans, we would fit somewhere between 16 and 20 on the truck. These are two foot wide Adrian steel shelves. I'll show you those in a minute. Okay. But four DHUs and about 16 to 20 fans. And I like to be able to set two jobs without having to go back to the shop. I want to be able to set two jobs before I go back to the shop. Okay. And so that's how we would do that. We would use the little label makers to make sure everything's got a label. So we know where to put everything. Everything has a place and a plate, a place for everything and every, I don't know how you say it. We made sure everything was labeled a place for everything and everything in its place. That's how you do it. Okay. So I was really big on that. And we learned that from the more floats guys, right? They're really good on organization. That's the outfit that I went through and they were really good on operations. There's extension cords and there you go. This is an inject drive base unit. And this is something that we suggest you guys have too for your specialty drying. So you can blow air in walls or suck up air out of the hardwoods. And we would have their hoses mapped up here. Okay. Over here on this other side, we would have a portable extractor and we would have an air scrubber right here. We always keep the air scrubber. Now we also had these dry forest jobs. Looking back, I mean, like, I don't know that I would mess around drying those. I bought them because they were small and they would fit in the truck and they were a little bit cheaper, to be honest with you. I was a little bit of a tight wad in the beginning. You could use those also to dry hardwoods, but they're not near as good as the injected dry stuff. But either way, I just, I want two units. I want to have two types of mat systems. If you can't get two injected drives, you can use the dry force, okay? And then we would stick the mats back here behind um, this area here. And there's like a, a 10 or 12 inch area that you can't see right over here. And that's where we would stick like a folding gorilla ladder and that would fit there. And then you can see we would have a sump pump or a trash pump up there. Babe, you got to have a trash pump. Those things are so good. If you don't have a portable extractor, a large shop vac would do it as well. And we would have a water claw that would be mapped up here. And this was our rigid toolbox for whatever that's worth. So here's the other side. Here on the side, you can see we just have our different plastics and whatnot. Antimicrobial stuff would go there. And then we would have like hammer drill would go up here, protective suits, all that jazz there. Okay. So that's what we would have inside of the van or inside of the truck. And this is a little better angle. You, you really can't quite see this. But again, we, we could put a six foot ladder over here. That's why we use the gorilla ladder too, because they're a little bit shorter and it can fold out. Cause I can't remember if this is actually 72 inches of clearance on the inside or not, but I think we were able to get a six foot ladder in, but if not, you would take a gorilla ladder and you, yeah, the, there's a six foot ladder. Oh, crap. I can just now see it. So it's stuck in there at the angle. There you go. Yeah. But normally we would have the gorilla ladder in there. Okay. And the gorilla ladder would fit in there as well. And a water claw would be sitting on top. And this is how we'd rack this thing out. Okay. We also had the big furnace, the wagons, the big heater wagons, and that thing would fit right in between these shelves too. And we did check that before we put all this stuff together. So uh, we'll get into the shelving stuff in a minute. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, let me know kind of as we go. Drop the questions in the comments. How about that? This would give you an idea what we'd have on there. 16 to 20 fans, four DUs, air scrubber, two injected drive, portable extractor or large shot back, water claw, trash pump, and then your various tools. Okay. So that's kind of how we would have that thing racked out on the inside. You got to have that separator. I've seen too many of you guys driving down the road without this separator right here, dude. And if you're driving right there, that thing will chop your head off. Do not go do water jobs without this freaking separator. Do not. You're going to kill yourself. I mean, do not do that. So let's look at the equipments and part list. So this is an example of the stuff that we had. We used, these were Adrian steel shelves, and this is going to be an older estimate, but this, I think this is what we did. Paid five grand to get it installed and you just got to do it guys. Like what you going to do? You ain't going to put all that stuff in there. I mean, I can't remember what they said they were charging us, but it, I mean, the install price wasn't that much money. It was probably like two grand or something. $4,600 to pick it up and 51 installed. Dude, let the pros do the work, okay? Let the pros do the work. So you guys can pause this and I'll let you go back and, and study that thing there, okay? But here's what I would say more than anything. The things that I learned is the Ford Transits were good, okay? I really like those a lot. I would not do a box truck. I wouldn't do a Transit Connect again, but I definitely would do the Transits or you could do your Dodges as well, okay? And then a pickup truck is pretty good if you're going to be doing some level of construction or reconstruction. Funny side note, we don't have that Ford Ranger anymore. That was a long story. It broke down on the side of the road and then it got stolen. We didn't report it for like, I think it was six months. I forgot because I thought that I thought it was getting fixed. That's a whole other story, dude. And it was a big ordeal too. I went to file on a claim because we couldn't find the dadgum truck. That's a different story for a different day, okay? But anyway, hopefully you guys will find this thing helpful. If you have any questions about the truck setup or anything else that we had, drop a comment down below. And if you would like for us to help you grow your company, go to warpershane.com, hop on a 10-minute call, see if we can help you. We'll see you guys in the next video. 
Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, we put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you wanna watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.